What is the best way to cut a sandwich? A tweet's been making the rounds recently that sparked a heated debate about this online. One user suggests that we've been cutting our sandwiches wrong for years. Instead, they've introduced their new method of slicing it into three pieces. So today, I'm gonna prove whether this fancy new cut is the greatest way to slice bread. And you're gonna wanna stick around because by the end of this episode, I'm gonna change the sandwich cutting game forever. Hello, internet. Welcome to Food Theory, the show that's delicious no matter which way you slice it. And speaking of slices, the Humble Sandwich is one of our most beloved food creations. I mean, we've been putting delicious fillings between slices of bread for basically as long as we've had bread. But the one thing people love more than eating them is arguing about them. Like the classic question, is a hot dog a sandwich? But the debate that has split sandwich eaters for years is whether you should cut your sandwich horizontally or diagonally. Team Horizontal is all about the uniformity and consistency of the flavor profile, while Team Diagonal wants to see as much of the ingredients as possible when they go in for that bite, and Team No Crust has been rejected and sent to time out in the corner. But now, a new challenger has approached, and it's a weird one that's taken the internet by storm. Twitter user Ryan Duff said that the best way to cut your sandwich is not to slice it horizontally or diagonally, but instead into thirds. Unofficially dubbed the Duff Cut, this one image bred a lot of discourse in the Twitterverse. Some were skeptical, but most who went on to try it said that they felt like they were getting more sandwich out of their sandwich. Sandwich. All right, Ryan, you've piqued my interest. Is the Duff Cut the next evolution in the world of sandwich making, or is it going to end up on the cutting room floor? To figure that out, we'll have to use the one secret ingredient more delicious than PB&J, math. So get your abacuses, abacies, abacai, get your calculator app on your phone ready as we use all the geometry and trigonometry I vaguely remember from high school to once and for all determine the mathematically best way to cut a sandwich. Let's start off by answering the question that some of you may be asking. Why do we even care about cutting sandwiches at all? Does it even matter when it comes to the sandwich itself? Well, yeah, and the data backs this up. A survey of a thousand people showed that by and large, the majority of people cut their sandwiches diagonally. Sorry, Team Horizontal, clearly the court of public opinion has come to an agreement, but it begs the question, why? When there's an infinite number of ways you can do it, why does diagonal come out ahead? Well, it all comes down to taste, like the literal math of taste, specifically the ratio of crust to filling you get in each bite. You see, the crust is truly what's at the center of this cutting debate. The crust of bread is made by the Maillard reaction. Basically, the heat from the oven makes the amino acids and sugars in the bread dough react and produce that brown layer we're all familiar with. The process ends up creating new compounds that add a lot of complexity to the flavor while protecting the inside of the loaf. It's delicious in most cases, but when it comes to sandwiches, the strong flavor can throw off the balance of the whole thing. Thing is, the crust provides important structural support for your sandwich so that all the ingredients don't just spill out from every side when you take a bite. The key becomes minimizing the amount of crust per bite while keeping enough for structural integrity. So let's take a look at cutting your sandwich horizontally and see what that gives us. Keeping things simple for our example, we're going to stick with a classic ham and cheese sandwich with two typical average slices of bread, which are about four and a half square inches. The filling will then add an extra quarter inch of thickness, making our sandwich for this episode come out to four and a half by four and a half by one and a quarter inches. Woo! Get ready for some numbers. With our sandwich selected, it's time to get slicing. By cutting horizontally, we get two rectangles. For each of those slices, we get one inside edge and three crust sides. That's a pretty bad ratio since most of your bites would include crust. Let's look at the crustless surface area when you cut it this way. We'll take the height, 1.25 inches, and multiply it by the length, four and a half, to get a surface area of just over five and a half square inches per half for a total of 11.25 square inches. Let's see what changes when we decide to make it a diagonal cut. Now we get two right triangles that measure four and a half by four and a half inches on each side, and thanks to our old pal Pythagoras, we can calculate the length of the hypotenuse to be 6.36 inches. And they said I'd never use the Pythagorean theorem again. Oh no, should I have paid more attention? In any case, using the same method as before to get our surface area, we get 15.91 inches, over four inches more than if we cut it horizontally. So just by choosing to cut your sandwich diagonally, you get yourself a 40% increase in surface area, but you also increase the amount of sandwich edge you get without crust by the same amount. So yeah, slicing your sandwich diagonally does give you more more tasty bits of the sandwich to work with. So when it comes to slicing your sandwich into two pieces, it's clear that the diagonal cut is the undisputed goat and the horizontal slice is left in the trash. But let's see how the tried and true diagonal cut does against the new up and comer, the duff cut. To do it correctly, we need to slice our sandwich into a Y shape with all three slices meeting at the exact midpoint of the sandwich. This creates one triangular slice and two trapezoidal slices. So how does this sandwich stack up? Well, the surface area is where the duff cut really shines. After slicing our sandwich the duff way, 
we get one, two, three, four, five, six good sides. Multiply the areas of each side and add them together, you get a total surface area of the duff cut at 21 and a half square inches. Way more than horizontals 11.25 and diagonals 15.91. That means that by using the duff cut method, not only do you get less crust per piece, but you also get 35% more good bites compared to even the diagonal cut. It is flat out a better eating experience. After running the calculations, I was honestly surprised that this viral sensation turned out to live up to the hype. The people on Twitter who said they tried it and felt like they were getting more sandwich, they weren't lying. The math checks out, but that begs the question. If cutting more slices leads to more delicious sides, wouldn't cutting it into even more slices than just three produce more deliciousness? In theory, food theory, yes, but in practice, it's a lot more tricky. While yeah, more cuts would lead to more crustless surface area, it comes with a massive downside. By the very nature of cutting your sandwich into more and more slices, each slice will inevitably get smaller and smaller. It kinda defeats the purpose of trying to design the perfect bite of sandwich when the slices get so small that all you get is one bite. You're losing the ability to savor all of your not so hard work. And the other reason why adding more slices is impractical is structural integrity. Let's take a look at a popular four piece sandwich, the club sandwich. By cutting it into four triangles like that, you would get a surface area of 31.82 inches. And yeah, that's more than any cut we've seen so far. And you reduce the crust you get in each piece. But by reducing the crust to just one edge of that size, you break down the structural integrity completely. Ingredients spill out too easily. I mean, have you ever noticed that they always come with those little toothpicks holding each piece together? It's not just for decoration. Without them, you'd end up with half of your sandwich in your lap. So yes, a sandwich sliced into 100 pieces would theoretically have the most surface area, but each slice would be so impossibly small that it would be as comical as it is inedible. So this Duff guy was onto something. Three slices is the perfect balance of maximizing the surface area for the delicious filling while keeping enough size and crust on the pieces to keep all the ingredients where they need to be. The Duff cut is without a doubt the best way to slice a sandwich. Well, almost. Up until now, we've been preoccupied with what pieces to cut the sandwich into, not how to cut those pieces. We've been thinking in two dimensions, the knife going straight up and down, but there's a third dimension to take into consideration, and it changes everything. This style of slicing is called the bias cut. It involves taking your knife and putting it at a 45 degree angle to the bread. I typically use this for slicing cuts of meat, but by taking this technique and applying it to sandwich cutting, we can effectively increase the crustless surface area of each piece of our sandwich. Even Iron Chef Bobby Flay prefers this style of cutting, but does it actually work? <laughs> you bet your bottom slice it does. Let's go back to cutting our sandwich diagonally, but this time with the bias cut. By tilting our knife at a 45 degree angle, we've now effectively increased the height of that good face. To figure out by how much, we're gonna have to use some good old fashioned trigonometry. Let's take a look at this slice from the side. We know the angle between the bread and the cut is 45 degrees, and we know the vertical height of the sandwich is 1.25 inches. So using Sokotoa and a bunch of other things I had to brush up on after years of not being in high school, the surface area for this method is a grand total of 22 and a half square inches. That's better than every cut so far, even the duff cut. And not only that, you're effectively increasing the amount of filling that hits your taste buds as soon as you bite in for more flavor. So all in all, when it comes to stepping up your sandwich slicing to maximize the mm, mm, mm factor, take your pick. Whether you want a gourmet like Bobby Flay or home chef it like Ryan Duff, cutting your sandwich using either one of those methods will make sure you make the most out of your meal. But I can't be satisfied with two different answers. What if I go full mad scientist here and find something even better? In the immortal words of that old El Paso commercial, ¿Por qué no los dos? ¿Por qué no los dos? That's right, I'm proposing that we take these two sandwich cutting methods we've talked about today and blend them into something that has not been seen by mere mortals before. I'll call it the Santi Slice, trademark pending. To make the Santi Slice, all you need to do is cut your sandwich into three slices, just like the duff cut. But instead of slicing straight down, you'll tilt your knife 45 degrees to the right or left and get cutting. After each cut, keep your knife in the same position and rotate your sandwich plate either clockwise or counterclockwise and slice away until you have the ultimate sandwich that celebrates the world of fine dining with that of the internet home chef. The perfect embodiment of what I do on this channel. Right? Right?
In any case, the question is, how good is this? Well, if you remember from earlier, the duff cut had a surface area of 21 and a half square inches, and the bias cut did it one better by adding a full inch at 22 and a half square inches. But by doing the fusion dance of the duff and bias cuts, you end up creating a sandwich that puts both of those methods to shame. The final surface area for the Santi slice comes out to a mouthwatering 30.46 square inches, 35% more than even the best bias cut and almost as much as cutting it into four pieces, but with all the structural integrity. The increased number of diagonal cuts from the duff cut mixed with the increased verticality from the tilt of the knife leads to the best of both worlds situation that is much better than the sum of its parts. If the duff and bias cuts are the bread, then the santi slice is the filling that elevates it to another level. You see that, folks? Turns out that the greatest spice in a chef's pantry is just a pinch of math. So what have we learned here today? First, when it comes to slicing your sandwiches, diagonals are your friend. They allow for more of that delicious surface area to work its magic. Second, when slicing your sandwich, two slices is good, three slices is even better. But don't go more than that unless you want to eat tiny bites of your sandwich that stay together about as well as your average Hollywood couples. And third, don't think of your knife game in two dimensions. Give that blade a little tilt and see how the surface area of your sandwich magically increases. Finally, by layering all of that advice together, you end up creating a better sandwich than even the best duff or bias cut could have ever mustered. And let's be real, in hindsight, they never had a chance to catch up to the Santi slice. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. And if you can't get enough sandwich talk, why don't you slice that video on your screen to go watch our video where we definitively prove whether a hot dog is a sandwich and what other wacky things should be called a sandwich as well. And as always, I'll see you next week.